Good morning, Hope Center Ministry Discipleship Hall, Hope Center Ministry followers, and all who follow Hope Center Ministry. This is Latasha McMiller here, and I am back this morning with another What Did Jesus Say? Um, this morning, I want to discuss what Jesus had to say about repentance, coming unto him, and bearing fruit. For all those who will come unto Christ Jesus, it is impossible for you to come to him and to remain the same. Amen. So um, I spoke previously in a, a video <clears throat> before this one concerning um, being ready. I spoke a little bit about um, bearing fruit in Christ, being faithful in the Lord. Just vaguely, I spoke a little bit about it. But this morning, I kind of just want to touch on this topic altogether um, because I feel that it is very important. We are in a time where we're definitely in the last days and there is a lot of deception and manipulation in the land and false doctrines and there's a great falling away from the true grace, the true gospel of Jesus Christ that is happening now with the believers. There is such a lack of respect for God and the things of God that is just ridiculous. And so we got to keep light shining and we got to keep um, the gospel of Jesus Christ in its right context. Amen. So this morning I want to talk um, about what Jesus had to say concerning bearing fruit. And we're going to go to a couple of um, scriptures this morning. But I want to start off in the book of Luke. <clears throat> I want to start off in the book of Luke. And I kind of want to pinpoint the root to our entire issue when it comes to sin and salvation. Um, if you want to see how a thing ends, all you got to do is go back and look at the beginning and how it started. The whole issue that mankind have with God is sin. And what is sin? Sin is to do those things that are wrong that you know you shouldn't do. To know what to do and not to do it is sin. And it is engraved in all of us. When we do wrong, we know it. Rather you are saved or not, when you're wrong, you know it. And um, sin started in the beginning with Adam. God gave his word. He gave his instructions. And Adam and Eve did the exact opposite of what he said. And that is disobeying. And with disobeying comes consequences. God didn't overlook their sins. He Loved them, yes. He still graced them, yes. He clothed them in their nakedness and he made things um, happen for them that they couldn't make. They tried to make happen with themselves, but they couldn't make it happen for themselves. And God being a loving father that he is, he graced them and he clothed them. But he also disciplined and dealt with them. And for some odd reason today, we think that we can, because Jesus has came and he has died for our sins and um, he paid the penalty and, and all of God's wrath was placed upon him that we can continue living however we want to in Christ Jesus and and we're okay with God. And that is so far from biblical truth. That is not the truth. And that's not the way it works with God. Salvation doesn't work like that. When you are born again, there is a true conversion. And will we sin and will we mess up? Yes. But we also have the Holy Spirit. And when we do mess up, he's there to convict us. He's there to reprove us. He's there to lead us and guide us back in the directions in which we need to go. And it is a continual cycle until whatever it is, whatever the stronghold is, or whatever it is that we're struggling with, completely falls away from us. And that's me speaking from not just knowing the word of God, but from living it and experiencing it. Amen. And so we can't get to a place where we think that because we believe in Christ Jesus and because he paid for our sins that we can continue to sin. He didn't die for us to continue to sin. He died for just the contrary. He died to reconciliate us back unto God. Amen. So um, I just wanted to clear that up. Will we sin and will we mess up? Yes. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's no, no one but one person who is satisfying in the eyes of God, and that is Jesus Christ. 
And as we are commissioned to come unto Jesus Christ and to be in Jesus Christ, and as we are one in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is one with us, we begin then to produce Christ-like fruits and that's pleasing to God. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Um, firstly, I want to go to um, Luke 13. And Jesus is talking about repentance. Um, to repent doesn't mean to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, you're sorry as you've been sorry. You've been convicted of something that you did wrong and you feel bad about it. But to repent, it's a heart. It's a, it's a heart piercing thing. Um, you recognize that you are wrong. Uh, mind and heart, you know that you are wrong. And then purposely in your mind and your heart, with you knowing that you are wrong, you go to God, admit that you're wrong, and then you say, I no longer want to do this. And that's a awesome place to be because that right there gives God the permission. That gives God the grace to do what it is that he needs to do to deliver you from whatever it is that you're doing that's against God. Amen. So Jesus is talking a little bit here about repentance. Okay, so at that time, uh, chapter 13, verse 1 is where we're going to start. Luke. At that time, some people were there who told Jesus that Pilate had killed some people from Galilee while they were there worshiping. He mixed their blood with the blood of the animals that they were sacrificing to God. Now, my Bible um, has God in a big G. Okay, so therefore, we're talking about the true and living God. These people obviously was uh, sacrificing, making a sacrifice atoning with animal with the blood of animals for their sins um that's how the jews did it before jesus christ came now i don't know the time framing um of how this was hap uh, of the time frame and how this happened because jesus of course is on uh on the scene i don't know if these people knew of him and they were just not following him i don't know the speculations of who these people were that um the followers were talking about so Jesus answered them. He said, do you think this happened to them because they were more sinful than all the others from Galilee? No, I tell you, but unless you change your hearts and your lives, you will be destroyed as they were. OK, what about those 18 people? Now, this is Jesus talking. He he he's seen some things that don't happen to now um, in our time. We see stuff like this happen on the news, but people see stuff and word was spread back then. OK, so Jesus obviously knew of some other people who had some destruction come to them. OK, he said, what about those 18 people who died when the Tower of Shalom fell on them? Do you think that they were more sinful than all the others who live in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you change your hearts and your lives, you will all be destroyed too destruction comes from disobedience and the thing is here all those though although those people whom Pilate killed them and mixed their blood with the blood of animals that is a revelation there there's no there's nothing that can atone for you besides Jesus Christ your your own good actions all of your deeds we can sacrifice animal after animal. None of that is going to matter because the fact of the matter is God has given us the greatest sacrifice and that is, that is his son, Jesus Christ. And only the blood of Jesus, only the blood of Jesus is going to atone for our sins. When we stand before God, we can't stand before him in any other way except for in Christ Jesus. <clears throat> now, that leads me to the next question. Are you really in Christ Jesus? Are you really in Christ Jesus? Because <clears throat> the Lord tells us that by the fruit of man, you will know who they are. Okay. And you can't say that you are a believer. Well, I take that back. You can say that you are a believer because there's a lot of people that believe in Jesus, but they don't believe him to the degree that he died for them and they accept him as Lord and Savior and final say of their life. The Bible says even demons believe and tremble. Let's just say you say that you are a believer. Are you really following him? Are you submitted to him? Is he really the Lord of your life? 
Do you do what he wants you to do and what he tell you to do? Or do you do what you want to do? Do you lean on your own understanding? Do you depend upon you? How is your relationship with Jesus Christ? That's, port- that's an important question for you to ask yourself. And for those of you who may be watching this video and you don't know Jesus yet, I'll come back to you at the end of the video. And I'll give you that opportunity to make him Lord and Savior over your life. Okay, let's go ahead and go down to um, to the sixth uh, verse in chapter 13, okay? <clears throat> Jesus tells this story. He said, there is a man who had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. He came looking for some fruit on the tree, but he found none. So the man said to his gardener, I have been looking for fruit on this tree for three years, but I have, ne- but I never find any. Cut it down. Why should I allow this tree to waste the ground? But the servant answered, Master, let the tree have one more year to produce fruit. Let me dig up the dirt. Let me dig up the dirt around it, put some fertilizer on it. And then if the tree produces fruit next year, good. But if not, then you can cut it down. Okay, let's go back through this, okay? A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Who do you guys think the man is? The man is God, okay? The vineyard is the kingdom of God. Okay, so God came looking for a fruit on the tree, but he found none. So for those of us that are in the kingdom of God, there's only one way in. And Jesus said that I am that way. Okay. And again, as I have said, if you are in Christ Jesus, you should be producing Christ like fruit. So God came unto that person and he don't see Christ like fruit on that person. You're not wearing Christ Jesus. Okay. He said, every time I come to this person, I don't see my son. I don't see Christ Christ like tendencies upon them. So he said to the gardener, who do you guys think the gardener is? The gardener is Jesus Christ. I have been looking for fruit on this tree for three years, but I never find any. Cut it down. Why, why, should I, why should it waste the ground? But the servant answered, Master, let the tree have one more year to produce fruit. God is merciful, y'all. Um, I have heard it said that you can take the grace of God in vain and it runs out on you. I used to didn't believe that. But actually seeing people do it, yeah, it's true. God's grace is eternal and it never runs out on those who embrace it. But for those who are taking it for granted, there is a time clock winding down, not on the grace of God, but on you, on your ability to embrace it, okay? Now, Give this person some more time and let's see what happens. He said, let me dig up the dirt around it and put some fertilizer on it. That right there can be tests and trials. That right there can be all the more goodness been thrown to you to try to reach you. Because, no, listen, nobody dies and go to hell blindsided. God have somehow, some way reached out to every single one of us. And we have seen it, we have heard it, and we have known it. But we refuse to embrace it. Okay, so this is what the digging is. This is what the fertilizing is. This is what he's trying to do here. I'm trying to get you to produce fruit, my type of fruit. And then he says, now, if the tree produces fruit next year, awesome. Praise God. But if not, then you can cut it down. And then he also goes in another book. He says that, you know, dead trees aren't worth anything but to be cut down and thrown into to the fire. God don't want to do that to any of us. He don't, I mean, he's a loving, caring God. And he gives us all the exact same opportunity to receive salvation, to receive life. Jesus said, I died that you can have life and have it more abundantly. But God is also a gentleman. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He won't force himself on anyone. Jesus said it in Revelation 3 and 5, I believe. I stand at the door and knock. I stand at the the door of your heart and I knock. Will you let me in? Satan will bust his way in. Yes, he will take advantage of you. He will deceive you. He will manipulate you. 
and then he will call you out. He will set your sins out for everybody to see it. He will condemn you. You know, he's totally opposite of God. But Jesus is a gentleman. He will stand at the door and knock. He won't force himself upon any of us. God created us with choice. He didn't make us robotics, robots. He gave, He created us to have choice, free will. Amen. So what are you doing with the opportunities that God is presenting unto you concerning salvation, concerning your life, a life in Christ and a life with him? Are you connected to Jesus Christ, bearing Christ-like fruits? Do you resemble Jesus? Do you bring light? And I'll later talk about some of the fruits that you should be bearing as a believer. But let's just um, go ahead and continue to read further into this bearing fruit. Um, I spoke about it in my last video. You know, we can't be idle in the kingdom of God. There's no way he didn't create us to stand still. We are citizens in the kingdom of God and we must go as Jesus went. We must go. He has commissioned every single one of us to be doing something. We need to be doing something. OK, we can't be useless trees. OK, so let's go to um, the book of John. We're going to go to the book of John and we are going to go to um chapter 15 and we're going to start in verse one okay and this is jesus speaking he says i am the vine my father is the gardener he cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit now we just read about that in uh the book of luke okay now i refer to jesus as the gardener but here Jesus is saying, I am the vine and my father is the gardener. But we know that they are all three in one. So as he speaks of himself in these contexts, God, the father, Christ, the son, the Holy Spirit, they're all one. OK, but this is what he's saying. I am the vine. My father's the gardener. He cuts off every branch of mine that does not produce fruit. Now, listen, y'all, he's not talking about the world. He's talking to the church. What did he say? He cuts off every branch branch of mind that does not produce fruit those that say that they are believers those that say that they are followers of christ he's not talking about the world y'all he's talking to the church he just said every branch of mine okay and he trims and cleans every branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit you are already clean because of the words i have spoken unto you remain in me remain in me and I will remain in you. A branch cannot produce fruit alone, but must remain in the vine. In the same way, you cannot produce fruit alone, but must remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If any remain in me and I remain in them, they will produce much fruit. But without me, they can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, they are like a branch that is thrown away and then dies. People pick up dead branches, throw them into the fire and burn them. If you remain in me and, my, and follow my teachings, meaning obey what I'm saying, you can ask anything you want and it will be given unto you. You should produce much fruit and show that you are my followers, which brings glory to my father. Again, God's obedience is a important factor in salvation. Yes, Jesus died for our sins. Yes, Jesus reconciliated us back unto the father. But it is perverted. It is wicked. It is twisted to think that you can take the blood of Jesus Christ and use it in that way to continue living in sin and think that you are okay with God. That is so not true. And I know it's been taught in a lot of the churches here in America, and it is false doctrine. That is not the ways of God. But also, don't, don't get it confused. 
We're not perfect. We will mess up. But listen, that's the whole point of him dying on the cross for those times when we will mess up. But don't you dare, don't you dare ever think that it's okay to mess up and to stay in that condition because it is not. That is giving room for the enemy to come in and to take you out of Christ. And that's the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal is to separate you from Jesus Christ. But as he just said, we have to stay in him. And once we are in him, we will produce fruit. So people should be able to look at you without even you saying a word and say something's different about that individual. Something's different about that person. Something special about that person. They should be able to look at us and see light without even knowing anything about us, without speaking a word. You know, there's a lot of talking about this is my title. This is my role. This is who I am in God. Too much talking is going on. There should be more demonstrations. The kingdom of God is to be demonstrated, okay? I don't have to tell nobody that I, my mom is Ruthie and my father's Charles. I don't have to tell them that. There's people that I've never even seen before. Just by looking at me, they can tell. Your mom must be. Your mom has to be. Your daddy has to be. Because they can. They see the resemblance, you know? And that's how it should be with us in Christ Jesus. People should be able to see, look at us and know. You don't have to say that you're a Christian. I see Christ in you. Amen? Okay, let's go... Um, no, we don't have to go any 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 place further. I just want to do this. Um, as I said earlier, there are some that I know that will watch this video and you've not ex yet experienced Christ Jesus. Even if for some of you who have and you feel that you have gone astray, um, you believe that Jesus died for your sins. Yes, you, you say you love him. You know, you've made him your savior, the Lord of your life, but you've been living your life your way. Today, I want to pray with you guys. Um, you can repent. You can go before God. As long as you got breath in your body, it's an opportunity, opportunity to get it right. You know, it's not over until your heart stops beating. It's not over until you take your last breath. And then either you're going to stand before him and you're going to be welcomed in or you're going to stand before him and he's going to say, depart from me. I don't know you. So today, I want to pray for those of you and pray with those of you who have not yet received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. Um, every single one of us have been born into sin. Every single one of us is on the opposite side of God if we're not in Christ Jesus. OK, so if that is you. Today. I want you to say this prayer, Father. God. I have sinned against you. I have done many wrongs against you. And I am sorry, Lord. I repent of living a life that has been against you. And I ask that you will forgive me of my sins. Jesus died for my sins. And I, re I receive and I embrace what he did for me on the cross. Now, Lord, I ask that you will forgive me of my sins. And I open my heart to let Jesus in and I receive him as my Lord and my Savior. From this day forward, Lord, I want to follow you. I don't know what I'm doing by myself, God. I don't know how to do this thing by myself, but you do. So I ask that you will send me the Holy Spirit who will help me in this thing called salvation. I ask that you will send people my way who is filled with the Holy Spirit, who will help me in this thing called salvation. Lord, lead me to a church home, Father, where I can continue to grow and I can continue to know you. And I thank you, Father, that you said that if I would confess my sins, you will be faithful and just to forgive them. I thank you that today I am forgiven and I have received a Savior and I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. And for those of you who already know Jesus, you have received him as your Lord and Savior, but you've gone astray. He wants you to come back. He, as a matter of fact, he has left the 99 on the hill. He's looking for you. 
He delights in you coming back. Don't let the enemy lie to you and feel that you have gone too far out on the limb. You've sinned. You've gone too deep in this mess because that's not true. God loves you and he's calling for you today. And he's telling you to come home. He's ready to reward you, not for anything that you've done, but for your presence alone coming back unto him. So I encourage you today, go back to God. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel ashamed. Remember the prodigal son, he was in a pig's pen. He came back, he was dirty. He smelled. His appearance wasn't that great, but it's okay. The father was delighted in his presence. Not because of how he looked, how he smelled, or any of that stuff, but because he loved his son. God loves you and he wants you to come back unto him. Amen. So go back unto God. Go back unto the Father. He's waiting for you. As a matter of fact, like I said, he's left the 99 on the hill and he's looking for you. Just right where you are, say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. All right, guys, I'm about to get off of here. I thank you for your time. Thank you for your ears. Um, I'm going to continue to pray for every single one of you. It's not easy. <clears throat> it's ain't called salvation. It's not easy, but it's very achievable because Jesus has already completed it. And remember that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And for those of us that are in the hands of God, we cannot be plucked out. So I encourage you to keep pressing, keep believing and keep walking, keep working in the kingdom of God. Amen. All right, if you guys need anything, again, as I say in every video, you can inbox me if you're on Facebook. Um, you can reach us at hopecenterministry at gmail.com um, through email. You can um, also find us on YouTube. We're on YouTube as well. So, um, And for those of you who have my personal cell phone number, I'm always here ready to pray with you to help you through anything that you need um so just get in contact with me or my husband amen all right until the next uh video guys i love you stay encouraged and stay in christ jesus producing that fruit amen all right talk to you later bye